Uh, here we are at the MUFON Symposium 2017 with Mr. Ken Johnston. He's a civilian astronaut and that worked uh, for NASA and also a pilot uh, with the Marine Air Corps. So, uh, thank you very much for this interview, Mr. Johnston. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your background and why you got interested in UFOs? Oh, wow. Um, Actually, that goes all the way back. You have to understand, my, my father was a, a bomber pilot in World War II and lost his life as, as in the war. And I grew up wanting to become a pilot, just like my dad. And um, when I got old enough to go off to a military academy and uh, graduate from there, and then went into the Marine Corps, uh, got my pilot training uh, in the Marine Corps, got out in 1966 and went to work for the Johnson Space Center uh, at NASA at Johnson Space Center. Uh, working for the Grumman Corporation. Now, Grumman's the one that built the Lunar Module spacecraft, and um, they hired four of us to be civilian astronaut consultant pilots. So our job was to test the Lunar Module in the vacuum chambers and be sure everything worked good, and then help train the regular NASA astronauts so that they could go to the moon and do a wonderful job, which they did. I see, very interesting, very special. So you're on one of the first civilian astronauts. First four. First four. So it's an honor to have you for this interview. Thank you. Uh, many people uh, uh, that are intellectuals in Peru think that uh, UFOs is, is a pseudo-religion or there's something wrong with them, somebody that believes in that. Um, why would UFOs be genuine and real also? Well, I think most pilots that have a lot of experience, in them, if you talk to them privately, they'll say, yeah, we've seen things that could outdo anything we had capabilities. And that um, uh, when you do your own research, instead of listening to some of the crazy people that are just babbling on that, you know, they married an astronaut and they had 20 kids, you know, crazy stuff. When the real things come about and you actually have uh, evidence of, of contact. And I, I think probably the first experience I had was when I was in the second grade and we had a, a um, crop circle formed outside of our little country town of, of Berlin, not excuse me, of Hart, Texas. And um, when we went out and looked at about 50 feet in diameter, so this was my first experience. And nothing grew in that, that area for, for years after that. So that was the beginning of my interest in that. And of course, and as a kid growing up, we saw all the movies, the Buck Rogers and the Flash Gordon, and we always thought, you know, someday we'll find out a little bit more about it. Now, getting a chance to work on the space program, and actually being that close to the, the astronauts and getting some of the true first-hand stories privately. Um, you get to the point where you realize that it, it, religion-wise, if, if God didn't create the universe and only put humans in one place, that's limiting the, the belief people have in, in an all our almighty God. So I believe that's true. Yes. And did you have any uh, opportunity to come up to, of, uh, with some uh, solid evidence that we are being visited while at NASA? Um, well, as a matter of fact, I saved, I was, I became, after we, we did the lunar module testing and all, I went to work at um, uh, the Lunar Receiving Laboratory and became uh, the director of the Data and Photo Control Department. And um, in that, I was able to take charge, like this picture right here, shows one of the best pictures uh -huh. of the alien base, one of, one of the alien bases on, on the moon. And I chose to, to uh, put it all all in a book so that uh, you know, oh, I see. the truth is out there. So these lights were on the moon while... What you're looking at here... Apollo this, was getting close. Apollo 15, this is an X on the lens. Yes. And they were photographing the command module when they, they came up to rendezvous and dock. Oh, wow. yes. And then my, my graphics illustrator, the artist, says, look what's on the moon. Mm -hmm. And he pointed that and then he enlarged it, enlarged it where I could see it. I had it for 47 years in my files and I had never looked at it that small. Yes. And uh, so there's proof right there in, in my book. Uh, Ken's moon, I go into, in the back of it, a lot of information on, um, let's see, page 244, let me see if I can get 244 real fast. Right there. There it is. Now, there shows you better, this is what the original picture looked like up here, and in, unless you knew to look for the small little X right here and look from the base, you can find alien base there. Then it got enlarged, 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 where you can actually see it. So now, now this, it, 
from what I've discovered recently, and I saw it recently within the past year, uh, there is a secret space program, and I believe that this is one of our bases. The reason from the military standpoint, look how the, the, the buildings and our domes are lined up, perfect lines, perfect rows. This is what we do in the military. We, we actually have to have everything all lined up. DTs will put a base on that will fit the train and do it naturally. So I'm, I'm beginning to believe this might well be our, our America, Earthlings, first bases on the moon. Um, do you, what do you think of Donna Hare's uh, testimony? Uh, I didn't actually meet, coincide. I personally didn't meet Donna Hare until many years later. Could you please, please get closer because uh, the noise probably yeah, going to it's gonna down. That's right, he's going to edit it. Right. I'm going to edit it. Well, not me, the technician. And thank you so much. Sure. The question again. Would you agree oh, Donna with Donna Hare's? Would you agree with Donna Hare's testimony? Well, Donna Hare is, is actually one that discovered uh, some of the pictures. I was told to get rid of uh, all but one set of all the pictures that I was in charge of, and uh, I, I argued with them until they finally said, "I don't care what you do, get rid of all but one set." I said, "Okay." So I gave through. I threw three sets in the Dempsey dumpsters. Okay. I sent one set to Oklahoma City University. Kept one set as their control, and I took one set privately home for myself. Now Donna Hare found the pictures that were thrown in the dumpster, and she has come forward and talked a lot about uh, the things that are visible on the real pictures, uh, because NASA and the, I've actually watched them paint out things on the surface and on the horizon. I actually personally observed that happening. And I asked him, what are you doing? He says, oh, well, we're professional strippers. We strip out and paint out evidence because people wouldn't know how to interpret what they're looking at. So I would say most people at NASA don't know that that is going on. That's true. That As you true. ask most people at NASA and say, no, no, nobody That's right. has told us that. The way they controlled it is because every three years, all the contractors contracts would end and uh, they would find new jobs or new people. So you didn't have time to go back and, and research and find out. So, uh, you know, that's the kind of the way they, they kept it controlled. And if, you, if, if they discovered somebody was going to be talking about things like that, they'd get fired or transferred. So you, you know, and you, you wouldn't get an opportunity to be involved that close to the real secrets of the, the space program. Oh, sorry. Well, we uh, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Because we need the truth. The people need to find out in the U.S. and world. worldwide. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you.